We don't always want to be caught out in the middle of nowhere in our camper with no cell signal, so we are going to install a WeBoost and we're going to show you how to do it. Welcome to Explorers.life. This is a lemon. This is a lime. <laughs> My name is Nate. This is Steph. We teach people how to build DIY campers. Let's get started. So this is the WeBoost Drive Reach RV cell phone booster. So let's see what's in the box. The exterior antenna. The interior antenna. The cell booster. Wire from the exterior antenna to the booster. And then various mounting hardware and things like that. So we're right here above the slider door where our kind of control panel is, if you will. We're going to be mounting the actual booster right here. And that means that we need to run this wire that goes to the external antenna up through the ceiling uh, to the back of the van where we're going to be mounting the external antenna to the roof rack. So we have our wire run for the exterior antenna. I uh, just got it running through the ceiling and then through this little cavity right here in the rear support rib of the van. And this is going to go up onto the roof to the exterior antenna. Uh, there was about, I don't know, 10 feet of extra wire or so, and so it's kind of coiled up throughout the length of this cross member. Uh, we're just going to leave this hanging for now, and this is going to be coming up through the roof later in the video. So put these ceiling panels back on, and then start working up uh, towards the actual booster. And actually, before we put the ceiling panels up, uh, we need to drill the hole in the ceiling panel where this wire comes out of the ceiling and goes into the booster that's going to be mounted right here, so I'm going to go do that. Now that the ceiling is back up and the wire is through the roof, the next thing we're going to do is actually mount the booster to the wall. So there's this little clip plate thing on the back of the Wii Boost that just comes off. Set this aside for a second. And then the plate uh, has two spots for number 10 screws. I'm just gonna use number 10 by half inch wood screws there. And it's also got Velcro backing on there. Um, so we don't really have anything that'll stick to Velcro. So I'm actually going to peel this off, uh, mount it up there, get the Wii Boost clipped into place, and get our wire connected to the exterior antenna port on the booster. Now the cell booster is attached to the wall and is also attached to the wire going back to the uh, exterior antenna. Now would be the interior antenna. So we've got the interior antenna and the wire that would go from the booster to the interior antenna. Now what I'm going to try right now is I'm actually just going to simply connect the interior antenna directly to the booster. Now I was talking to Chad this morning and he was uh, saying that they had errors whenever they did this and tried to set it up. But I'm going to try and give it a shot. And then if this doesn't work, then I'm going to use the wire that comes with the WeBoost uh, install kit. And then I'm gonna run this up by the headliner and move it somewhere else. But I'm gonna leave this as is right now. We'll check back once everything's completely hooked up. The next step is going to be connecting power from the 12 volt fuse block to the WeBoost signal booster. So we have access to the back of our 12 volt fuse panel at this point at our power wire plugged into here. And now the WeBoost that we bought, it only comes with an AC to DC adapter here. And so it takes 120 volt AC and converts it down into 12 volt DC. And what they have a actual DC uh, outlet that would replace this, but ultimately this is a 12 volt fuse block. And so what we are going to do is cut this here. It's going to have two wires inside of it and then connect it up to the positive and negative terminals on the back of the 12 volt fuse block. If you're uncomfortable with that, maybe consider getting the actual uh, approved wiring kit, but that's what we're doing. So we need to be able to get this wire to the back of our 12 volt fuse block. And since this is on the outside of the panel here on the booster, we need to get this wire into the wall somehow. Not really sure how we're going to do that, but we're about to figure it out and just keep on moving. Uh, it's pretty highly specific to our particular build, so we're just going to mess with it until we figure it out. So, there 
are not two wires in here, uh, unfortunately. <laughs> so what we have going on here is there is one wire right here with a bunch of smaller wires around it. All these smaller wires are the negative wires and the positive wire is inside of this. Now that's kind of annoying um, and I would probably recommend going ahead and getting the DC to DC wiring kit for uh, you know if you guys are trying to follow this follow along with this but I'm going to do it a different way and uh, we're going to make it work and still have it like be nice and safe and everything like that so I'm going to do it show you how to do it. So we've made pretty much two wires. So I took the wires that were around the outside of the sheath and I put them in black heat shrink here. This is going to go to the negative uh, bus bar on the back of our fuse block. And then this white wire is our positive wire that's going to go to one of the fused connections on the back of the 12 volt fuse block. And it's going to get a fuse right inside of here. And we'll fuse it at five amps. And this part of the install is wrapped up for now. Now by this little dangly antenna. So like I said, we're gonna test and see if this actually works in this location. And if it does, uh, I got a little angle bracket from another project that we had going on that I'm going to end up just mounting right here so we can have the antenna just right here, nice and neat. So the next thing we're going to do is move outside of the van and mount the exterior antenna. We are about to install the exterior antenna, but I wanted to do that on this tabletop. Uh, that was just, a little easier to manage all the parts and stuff like that, get it assembled before you actually crawl up on the ladder. In the WeBoost box for the exterior antenna, we got a few pieces of hardware here and various extensions and stuff to get the antenna up to the level that it needs to be, which is as high as possible, but we didn't want it looking like an RC car, so we're not using this one. And since we're not using that one, we probably don't need the spring adapter thing either. Now this one here is for if we're mounting it to like the side of a ladder or something round, uh, which that's not what we're doing. So we actually don't need that mount either, but did want to use this um, to get it a little higher up and give us a little more wiggle room with uh, this cable. So we're going to use these three items from the WeBoost box. And then we also picked up this bracket from the local hardware store, but Unaka Gear Co. actually has a better bracket that I like better, but I actually didn't see it until this morning. So uh, I'll leave a link to that one in the video description. You can check it out. So we're gonna put this together. And now that this is assembled, we'll just kind of scoot it to the side just a little bit. And we're going to uh, prepare the roof entry gland. So this is a sea view cable seal. And it just comes apart like this, a little gasket on the bottom, and then this little part right here in the top. And we actually have to drill a hole through this to the appropriate size so that this wire can go through. Okay, and this is installed. Uh, got some actual pretty good instructions here if you just take the time to read them, uh, unlike what I did the first time. So this just goes around the wire, that little slit right there, and then it fits up nice and neat into the bottom or the top of the cap. All of this fits down through the roof, like so, and then when we tighten this piece to this piece, it squishes that grommet together to 
tightened to a waterproof seal around this. So now that this is all assembled, we can take it up to the roof, drill our hole, grip the hole, and mount this in place. We started by tracing a hole below the antenna, and then made our initial hole with a small drill bit, and then used a step bit to make the hole bigger. And then we vacuumed up the mess. Next, we wiped the space with Windex, and then treated the exposed metal with Rust-Oleum paint. Then we put some sealant around the bottom of the gasket of the roof entry gland, and then screwed down the roof entry gland. Next, we removed the 80-20 cover off the back of the roof rack and slid in a T-nut. Then we replaced the 80-20 cover, put Loctite on the bolt, and then tightened down the antenna to the 8020. And then we fed the wire through the gland and pulled the wire through from the inside. And then inserted the gasket into the gland and then tightened down the cover of the roof entry gland. And now that this is sealed up nice and tight, uh, this is the wire that comes through here. And this is a wire that goes up to the cell booster up front. I can just take this little red cap off, discard it, and then connect these together, and then stuff these back up in that same cavity where we were working earlier. The exterior antenna is all mounted up and we move back up here to uh, get it all set up. It has an app uh, to actually install it. So I'm just gonna walk through this process. I haven't done it yet. So we're just gonna see what it gives us. Install my booster, drive reach RV, mount outside antenna and route cable. Connect, okay, we've done all of that. Booster off test. Let's test the speed of your current cell signal. Complete each of the steps below, then tap start. We'll compare it to your boosted speed soon. Grant location permission while using the app. Disconnect the booster from power. Park in a weak signal location. Um, we're in our shop right now. Our signal's not like bad. It's not probably not great anyway because it's a metal building. So we'll say that's fine. Park outside and not next to a building. Well, we're not going to do that. So we're just gonna say that we did and see what happens. Test current cell signal, it's got 90, negative 94 dBm. Okay, booster on test. Connect the booster to power. Park in a weak signal location, we're in the exact same spot. Park, yep, we didn't move. Got green and red going on. Check signal, waiting for booster to power on. Negative 116 dBm. Result, let's try that again. Okay, check that all connections are tight. So we're not getting much of a result right now, and I'm thinking it's probably due to one of two things. So one, uh, this is too close to this unit. So I'm going to connect the wire that we showed earlier, and then uh, we're going to move this further away, just string it over here along the top of the dash, repeat the test, and see if that does anything. Same thing. So this didn't matter much. So my next thought is we have pretty good cell signal right here. Uh, we're in a building, so we're already like kind of disobeying two of the startup rules. So we're going to go um, probably tomorrow uh, to a spot where we know that there's uh, less cell signal and we're gonna test this again. So we'll be back. We just drove to the top of Rabbit Ears Pass about 30 minutes outside of town and to a spot that we knew that we didn't have cell signal. And currently we've got one bar of cell signal and the Wii Boost is unhooked. Um, the power is not on. And I got on tech support with Wii Boost because we were having issues with their app not really picking up much of anything. And Wii Boost actually said they have some glitches with their app and to download the network cell info light app and it's uh, more consistent. And so we have a reading currently of negative 123 dBm. 
and we're going to go ahead and plug that in, plug the WeBoost in, and you should be able to see that number climb. Cool, and it looks like it's evened out at negative 112. So an obvious uh, difference from when it's unplugged to when it's plugged. So pretty cool. Um, so now we're going to do a test where we're going to bring this antenna back over here and see if we're actually going to be able to mount this to the wall underneath the booster. Now I move the antenna over here and we're still at that negative 120 dBm rating. Go ahead and plug this in and see what happens. And it looks like this has leveled off at actually negative 99, negative 98. So even a little bit better than over there. So that's pretty cool. So that means that I am gonna be mounting it right here. So we're going to take this back to the shop and install our bracket to get this mounted here. And that's pretty much gonna wrap up this project. That wraps up this project. Now we want to test the WeBoost in a future video, but we wanna hear from you. What kind of test do you think that we should do for the WeBoost? What do you wanna see? Let us know in the comment section below. We'll see you next time.